Hey, welcome to a new Project Camp update. In this video, we're gonna show you some sensors we've installed on the land, including this wind meter. And we're also gonna talk more about the, all the electronics, how we hooked everything up together. And we're gonna show you a map because we're currently mapping out all the native trees on the land to think about the future of our landscape. So get ready for some geeky stuff. Hello guys. Hello. Who are you? Uh, I'm Naomi Eeltink. I'm uh, Jaren. Uh, I'm going to be here for two months. I'm from the Netherlands. Um, I'm going to be logging native trees in the area. Uh, we're now up the rock. That base camp is down there. Um, I think it would be great to show all the native trees in the area um, in contrast to all the mimosa and the eucalyptus. And in the future they might want to build stuff and I recommend or like everybody recommends not to build next to native trees because you might need to chop them and you want to regenerate the whole land. I just picked a waypoint app, um, so I'm going to be standing next to a tree, wait until the GPS locates, locates me and then create a waypoint, add some information like the name, the height of the tree, give it a color code um, and then walk to the next one. And we have Siggy here for support, right? <laughs> Mental support. Just like eating the trees. Friday. Yeah, we try to teach him to eat the eucalyptus and the mimosa. <laughs> he just likes sticks a lot. Do you think that will solve the problem of Project Camp with the mimosas? We might need a lot of dogs. Just dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Cool. This is the app. Um, the blue spot shows where we are. Uh, this green area is base camp. Um, here we have the old ruins. Um, we just walked up here, uh, I'll show you the logs I did now. Walk from base camp, this is all mimosa forest. And then the first native tree I saw I started and just like logged everything I saw. Um, <coughs> the different color codes, like the red ones are the strawberry trees, uh, the green ones are the oak trees. Uh, English oak, um, pink is cork tree, uh, which we really love here. Uh, the pine trees are the black ones. And it's fun to see that the whole line this, this is, is already like the, the border of our land. But this one is all like planted eucalyptus trees. Mm -hmm. um, so I just worked my way up to the big rock. Um, and this was my first area. The app is called Treclia. Uh, so n next to the Treclia app I, uh, for the waypoints, I use PlantNet. Um, it's an identifying app. Uh, you can download it for free, put your location in. So I'm, we're in, the, in Europe now. Um, and you can add photos from your gallery or even like take them new. You add a picture, like from a leaf, you can add like it's a leaf or a fruit, bark or flower. And it helps identify the specific species. And what are strawberry trees? Strawberry trees are for bush-like trees. Uh, we can walk up in a bit. Uh, it has different branches and the little fruits are like spiky strawberry-like fruits. And I think the name is just like because the, the fruit turns red, it looks like a strawberry. But you can't eat them, right? I'm actually not sure. You mm. can. Oh, you you can. can. You can. That's fun. They we stick it to your teeth. Oh, we should try can. them. If they're better than strawberries, then something. You can make it. Are they tasty? Liquid. I haven't tried. We'll definitely try now. Let's go. Let's do it. I make it. Oh. And these are the little fruits. Ah, I think I have seen them already. Yes. They're turning already. They're turning and red already. Have to be Strawberry tree. And the, cool. this is amazing for wood carving if you want to make a spoon or something. Uh, it should have a lot of tannins. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you bite on it? Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't even look like a strawberry. Mm. It doesn't, does it? Mm. Sorry, if that's on camera, please don't put it in. <laughs> Siggy, what tree is that? Is that an oak? It's a mimosa, huh? No, we try to teach you not to eat the oak. <laughs> <laughs> Only mimosa. What do we have there? It's an oak? It's an English oak. Um, you can see that the light green 
uh, short stalks, um, earlobes at the beginning of the stalk. Uh, it's the most common one in the land here, uh, oak wise. Um, quite easy to recognize this one. This is a cork tree. So this is the burned uh, mother tree and behind it, it has new growth. So we will lock this. Um, I will stand next to it as close as I can. Get the GPS going again. Make a waypoint. Put down cork tree. Oh, cork oak, sorry. Cork oak. And then it's logged. Right there. Are there many cork trees here left? Yeah, actually I would say quite quite a lot. Um, like a few big ones. Uh, you can actually see the the bark is being burned or has been burned. Uh, but around it all new ones sprout. I wouldn't say it is the, the most forecoming tree here. But um, yeah, they could, they could come back. I'm quite optimistic about these. All right, let's go to the next one. Yes. Oh. There's a pine. There's a pine. Uh, quite a tall one, I would say. Um, I go in again as close, uh, close as I can. Make a waypoint. I chose the color black for this icon and saving it. There you have it. Bueno. What is this? Uh, this is Pyrenees oak. So you can differentiate between the English oak and the Pyrenees by looking at the leaves. This is quite velvety, almost like hairy. Um, especially on the back, it feels very soft. Um, the color is a bit more a grayish green. And that is one of the characteristics of the Pyrenees oak. Uh, we are here at the English oak and this, these are called plant gals. Uh, they're actually like abnormal growths uh, in the oak. Uh, they're caused by various parasites such as fungus, uh, fungi or bacteria, uh, mites or even wasps. Um, they're actually now empty. Uh, they start out really green and they dry out a very papery feeling. Um, and they're quite like, common in oaks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is the terracotta pot I just found. These can be found all up, all up in the Mimosa forest and like up the big rock. Uh, they're all broken, but they used, to, uh, they used to have them for gathering all the resin from the Mimosa. So if you cut the mimosa uh, bark, it slowly like pours out resin, like the uh, hearts. Um, it's actually quite nice. We find them and we take them back to the camp and we use them for like slow watering and put them next to plants and stuff. So we try to gather as much as we can. And they are burned, right? They burned, yeah, from the forest. Uh, from, from the last fire. Yeah, 2018, if I remember like 17. correctly. 17, yeah. yeah. So most of them are burned when we find them. Okay. So this is what you do this the is what last I do days. All day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so knowing that the path we just walked is the border of the land. Um, down there is the road. So I just need to get like zigzag through every meter of the mimosa forest. Um, knowing that the mimosa represses other species growth that we won't find any other species, just maybe some eucalyptus, sometimes some thorns like bremels. Uh, but just to be safe as a good ecologist, you need to get like every meter. Um, so I'll just continue zigzagging my way through this uh, area. All right. That's it for today, huh? That is it for today. We did a square today. Um, a square is a hectare. This wasn't really a dense area, so we could get a lot done today. Um, 
Yeah, um, I would say that the whole project area is around a bit more than 10 hectares. Uh, I hope to get like all the logging of the native trees done, but it will be a very uh, hard project to do. Uh, some hectares are very dense in native trees. Uh, the one we just, just did this afternoon or this morning um, wasn't really dense, it was like mostly mimosa forest. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a lot of work, but uh, a lot of fun. Hey, I'm Jerry, I'm from the Netherlands and I've been here for a week to install a home monitoring system. So in the last season, Dave installed like the solar panels and all of these electronics. And back then he already mentioned that it's important to be able to get some statistics out of this. Because here at Project Comp, we want to measure different aspects of off-grid living. And we want to see how the land grows, uh, how it evolves. So to make a uniform platform for this, I installed a Raspberry Pi running Home Assistant. And that is really a an, an big open source project that is made for home automation. So to capture a lot of data, sensor input, and based on that also control different aspects. So with that, we know how much energy we use, how much solar power we are generating and how much is still left in the battery, for example. But over time, we can add more sensors like a weather station, which we will show in a bit, but also more sensors like a water well sensor to see if we still have enough water. And to keep all of this organized, we made a display inside of the kitchen container where we show if the battery is charging, how much AC power we are using, and how much is still left in the battery. So for that we mounted this display where you can see that currently the battery is at 63% and it's in the green, this arrow, so that means that the battery is now charging. And that's because the solar is generating a lot of energy. So in the morning it was kind of cloudy, but now the weather is getting better, so we're generating more electricity. And we're basically not consuming any AC power, not a lot. So it's mainly just the fridge being on and some tools being used on the ruin. The coolest thing here is that you see that there is zero kilowatt hours from the grid, because we are basically just fully off grid. So we really rely on solar energy and energy stored in the battery. And with this system, we can yeah, basically track a lot of different, set, uh, different sensors and different setups. So we also implemented a weather station where we can see how the ground temperature is evolving, how much light is being uh, shined on different parts of the land, and also the, the soil. So if the soil is very dry or if it's very wet, uh, lately it's been very dry because basically the last two weeks have been super hot and no rain at all. And over time we also want to track different more manual settings, uh, manual yeah, sensors as you wish. So for example the amount of people at one time at Project Comp, uh, the times that we've seen foxes, the amount of gas bottles that we still use because this is the only fossil fuel that we're still relying on and also the amount of water that we consume and that goes through the system and goes back into the well. Here we have a small sensor setup. So it's being powered by a small solar panel and this generates all the electricity that the sensor needs. And then once every 15 minutes it sends it to the Raspberry Pi that I showed in the back and that really captures and logs all the data. This is a small yeah, food container box that we thought it would be useful to use to keep it waterproof. And these are just very simple microcontrollers. So we really want to create a platform that different people can create different sensors to measure different aspects of the land. Okay, so that's everything about the weather station here. Over time there will be more sensors, more statistics, but this is a nice first introduction and basically from here on we will keep you up to date in the future and 
for now, enjoy the rest of the video and see you. So one sensor we've installed uh, before Jerry came with all these geeky sensors is this uh, wind meter. Uh, it measures the strength of the wind. And the main reason for installing this was uh, to check if it's worth it to add a wind turbine to generate electricity. So we actually already installed it last year on the top of the highest point of the land. Um, but we realized whatever electricity we generate there, we're probably not gonna put a wind turbine there because we need to pull the cable all the way to base camp. So since a few months we put it here in base camp because it would be way more realistic if we get electricity to actually hook it up to our system. And it probably would be more of a small wind turbine. There was more wind up the rock, um, but yeah, harder to get the electricity. So here would be a smaller uh, turbine with probably bigger blades, but a small motor. So here you can see a simulation of what a three meter blade would look like. And overall, this project is a research done by From Waste to Wind. And they're actually with fresh plastic, uh, trying to make a wind turbine from recycled plastic uh, using 3D printing. So you can find more about that research here. Um, but yeah, overall it's an ongoing topic. And ideally also we hook this one up to our system that we all have it digitally and synced so it's easier to extract all the data. So this is still uh, generation one. Hello! Today we are in uh, Sao Joaninho because Daniel invited us uh, on his property to pick oranges because he's working in the United Nations and he's not here to pick them and they just rot away. So he sent us an email and invited us and we're gonna pick some fresh oranges. And there we have uh, Charan, we have Julie, and we have Ted. And me, of course, Felix. So you have it a lot in Portugal that uh, people have orange trees on their property. And since the young people move away or, I don't know, go for work in the big cities, the oranges just get not picked. So a lot of places, you have a lot of orange trees with a lot of falling oranges. Fresh and nice to eat, but no one picks them. Here we have all the picked oranges, took us maybe 10 minutes, quite a lot, there are still some left on the tree, but I guess that's kind of everything we need for the moment. So thank you Daniel for the oranges. Of course, we uh, we used the oranges after plucking them. Uh, we made some uh, some orange juice for uh, for breakfast, and we made an orange cake. Uh, of course, you can make many more things with oranges, and I think we're also going to look into preserving the oranges. So, for instance, drying them, making a drying rack, drying the peels, or drying maybe a little orange in order to preserve them and save as much oranges as, as we can from the trees that are producing them, but the consumers that are not there anymore. All right, so that was it for this video. And next video is number 58. So we're gonna talk about our current problems or challenges. And we're also gonna do a Q&A. So if you guys have any question for me, the project, the people here, let us know in the comments. 
and then we can uh, talk about them next week. All right, that was it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you already want to see the next update, make sure to support on Patreon. If not, no problem. We'll just see you again next week, same channel, same time. Bye. Hey there, it's me again, Felix, the video maker who made the videos in the last four months for this channel. Uh, I guess you know it already, I'm gonna stop with my work. If you want to know more about that, there is a little message in the YouTube uh, Project Camp community section. Uh, anyway, just wanted to say thank you guys for your amazing support and the lovely comments in the last videos. Uh, really made me happy to read that. And if you want, you can have a look on my Instagram or my website. And yeah, stay tuned. New people gonna come, also new video maker, so I guess it's gonna be exciting. And um, I'm yeah gonna go back soon to Germany. So I hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, thank you again and take care. Goodbye.